Hello and welcome to this uh, second video of this new video series on uh, the Russian talent uh, Daniel Dubov, one of the most aggressive player of his generation, maybe one of the most aggressive players in the world. He already has, he already got the respect of Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, said that he is very impressed by the style of Daniel Dubov. A very very strong attacking style he is not he has no fear he plays every game for a win he tries to find new ideas in every game so it's really a pleasure to see Dubov play so let's see another of his brilliant victories this time he was black and he was playing against Sergei Karyakin Sergei Karyakin who loses quite a few games Remember that he was called Minister of Defense after he defended so many bad or lost positions. So it does not happen very often that Sergei Karyakin loses a game, especially with the white pieces. But Dubov managed in that game to beat him in just like, uh, well, he was completely winning after already 15 moves, as you will see. So let's have a look at that fantastic game. It was a Scandinavian defense, so already quite. Uh, well, quite a rare opening played by Dubov. The queen d6 variation, which is the second most popular move after queen a5. d4, knight f6, knight f3. And here, the first, well, first, maybe actually the, at least the second, or not to say third, big surprise in the game, because it's not like Scandinavian, it's something you expect. And Daniel Dubov played here the move knight c6, which almost nobody ever played. Usually black plays a6 or c6 to prevent knight b5, or sometimes g6 to quickly de develop his pieces on the king side. But instead, Dubov decided to play knight c6, and he proved this point in the game, claiming that knight c6 is a playable option. White reacted in the most normal fashion, knight b5, queen d8, and he played bishop f4, threatening knight takes c7. But I believe bishop f4 is not such a precise move because it allows knight d5, defending c7 and attacking the bishop. I believe that white would be slightly better if he pushed d5. Of course there is a small trick that you cannot take the pawn on d5 since there would be queen d5 and knight c7 check winning a full piece. But let's say knight b4, c4, e6. Maybe queen a4 or something to have some strat on the diagonal. c6, take, take, and I like, I like white position here. I think the pawn structure should be slightly favorable for him. He's going to develop his pieces quite easily, put his rocks in the center, and I think the position should be a little bit easier to play from the white side. It would also be possible after e6 to just take on e6, and well, black is not in time to take on d1 and take on e6 because then c7 will be hanging. But bishop e6 and just play this uh, this position. I believe that although the position is pretty sym symmetrical, I, I believe that white should be slightly better here. Anyway, bishop f4 was played in the game, so of course the both played knight d5 happily, bishop g3 a6, removing the knight from b5 before white plays c4 himself. And uh, here, Karyakin made a mistake. He played the move knight a3. You always teach beginners not to put their pieces in the corner. And this game is a perfect example why you should not do it. Knight c3 would have been a much better move, although... Well, I do not think black would have many problems after a move like bishop g4, for example. But the move knight a3, with the idea to keep the option of playing c4, was heavily punished by Daniel Dubov, who played here the move e5, just opening the position completely, um, opening the diagonal of the bishop. So bishop a3 can be a strat, bishop b4. With, and you can see that white is having problems with his king in the center. It is more or less forced for white to accept the gift offered by Dubov. Bishop b4 check. And here was the last moment Karakin could have played it safe. He could have played c3. 
After knight c3, bc3, say queen d1, rook d1, bishop a3, black has no problem, but he should not be better. The position is probably about equal. Although, if I had to pick one side, I would probably pick black because the bishop on g3 is not that great and c3 is a potential weakness. Bishop a3 here would be possible as well, so the pawn structure would be a little bit worse for white, but the bishop pair might compensate for this, so that would be, well, both choices would be possible, I don't know what would be best. But anyway, in the game, Karyakin played knight d2, and here Dubov played a brilliant move, he played h5, and only a few moves later we are going to understand why the move h5 is so important. Let's have a look if white plays the most natural move h3. Now black has a very strong move knight to d4. He can play h4, but he's not in a hurry, so knight d4 first. c3 is not really a move, you just take and take. And if white plays knight e4, you're going to see the big difference with the move as h5 and h3 included. Bishop f5, rook c1, and here bishop c3. Fantastic move. The bishop is not hanging because of the knight c3. The queen on d1 will be hanging thanks to the move h5. Otherwise, white, white would be able to play queen h5 in the position. So can you imagine such a small nuance in such a such a complicated position and here not only bishop c3 not only the bishop is not hanging but bishop takes b2 is a big threat and knight knight c3 next so black is actually already winning here of course knight c4 is not a forced move but well white would like to avoid bishop a3 and knight c3 but if knight c4 does not work then maybe you should play bishop d3 but black gets a wonderful position here look the black, the white queen would like to go somewhere there, but all the squares are controlled. He has to go to c1, and after queen d5, black's position is wonderful. White is unable to castle due to knight e2 check, and well, black is simply, well, black's position is simply overwhelming here. So h5, fantastic move by Dubov. h4 was Karyakin's answer. Bishop g4, that's the most natural move, and actually the white position is already turning to turning into a nightmare. Bishop e2 was played. Uh, this is a mistake, but the position was already very bad. Queen c1, for example, just queen e7 and long castle. I mean, the compensations are so huge that you can consider the black position to be completely winning. For example, g5 here, and the attack is going to be. Uh, completely crushing, almost for free, because that's only one pawn, one pawn that you may collect uh, very soon. And look at that knight on a3, that is still on a3. I mean, uh, well, it is clear when you see that position that uh, Karyakin did everything wrong in that game. So, bishop e2 is a mistake, f3 is not great either, for example, well, maybe just bishop f5 to three the knight e3. This is just a disaster for, for white. Bishop e2 was played, but after bishop a3, white is losing material. If b a3, then knight e3, winning a piece. And after bishop g4, bishop b2, bishop h5 was tried. And Karyakin tried to launch an attack, but that's a full rock. And well, queen takes a1 is rock takes h5. So after just 16 moves, white can basically resign. The position is over, it's a full rock, and there is actually no attack for white at all. The game continued for a while, another like 12 moves. They're not very interesting because, well, for a player like Dubov to play with an extra rook is really a piece of cake. So, he just played a couple of normal moves, he reorganized his pieces in a very elegant way, and he finished the game with a very nice tactic, rook takes e4, with the idea of f4, bishop f2, and rook d1 check, and the rook is lost. So this is really what we could call a kill, I mean, that's really a lesson that Dubov has been teaching to Karyakin, 
kayaking who loses so few games with white. That game was really painful and congratulations to both. Well, again managing to score heavily with one of his very new and fresh opening ideas. See you soon in the next video.